I want to build a really big camera. I want to make gigantic contact prints. Uh, my, my friend Andrew and I, we, we converted a basement into a camera a couple years ago uh, so we could you know, take really gigantic contact prints. Like we had 20 by 24 inches uh, sheet film. Um, and it was really fun. We made some gigantic prints. But what I'd like to do is get a van. I, somebody's done this, actually. You get, get a van and then you know, essentially coat plexiglass while you're inside the van with, with liquid emulsion. And then you can just remove a lens cap from a lens that you screwed into the side of the van. And you got a mobile uh, gigantic uh, negative make thing. So I think that's something that um, a relatively unexplored area of, of film photography that, that someday when I have the, the time and resources, I'd, I'd like to investigate more. That's kind of going in the opposite direction from digital, I guess. <laughs> more and more cumbersome. <laughs> There's only a couple of kinds of film and paper available now. Like even even in the last decade that I've been working, uh, you know, Kodak has has gone under, and a lot of a lot of the um, you know supplies that I used to rely on, I had to find new sources. So, I mean, there could be some huge change where all of a sudden I'm coating my own glass <laughs> or plexiglass, uh, you know, in in a few years. But I guess barring that, um, I think the continued role of film is in producing prints that people should look at on a wall. I guess producing precious objects in a way that um, I've, I've not uh, typically experienced with digital prints. I think, I think digital technology is amazing. And I think it's you know, obviously going to keep getting better and better. Um, but uh, I think it would be a shame if uh, you know, a technology, as it was when it came out, the technology of film you know, that still has, in my view, uh, some, some unique applications were, which die out. With film, you do have the sense that you are looking at light. You are looking at the direct chemical results that, you know, struck the film and in some way preserved and transferred to the, to the final print. Um, and I think there's a, I guess there's a directness in that, even though, even though, you know, I manipulate my images a lot. I think in, in good prints, there's, there's a kind of directness in a film photograph. There, it may be that people will, will discover new applications uh, for film that we haven't figured out in the last 150 years. So I guess it's just important to keep it around as a living, living technology and tradition, um, because I, I think it's different from digital. Um, and I think you know, it's, uh, it's nice to have both available. The, the printing process in the darkroom doesn't take that long. So you know, I have to have. I've got a table, a wet table that has, you know, my chemicals on it. There's a developer. I've been, I've been mostly using a developer called Amidol, which is deadly. So be very careful with it. Don't use it probably. I'm going to switch actually. I had to use it for this whole batch of photographs because I wanted them all to look the same way. Um, and then you got your stop bath, which after you placed a, a print into the developer, you put in the stop bath to stop the development. And then there's fixer, which you know, fixes the image. Um, and there's a, there's a dry table where I've got uh, either, uh, depending on which kind of photo paper I'm using, I use either uh, an enlarger or a bare light bulb. If it's a really good negative, a really nice negative, sometimes you'll just have to make a work print and then one or two little things and, and you're done within 45 minutes. Other times you have something that requires um, you know, lots of dodging and burning, so selectively blocking out or increasing the amount of light, striking different parts. And I do that with basically various pieces of cardboard um, cut to size. It's I guess the most time consuming thing for me is the is actually after the dark room when I apply this silver reducing bleach to it. So that I do not do in the dark room, I actually do it in my bathroom <laughs> because I need to have a supply of water. Basically you, you paint on this chemical that dissolves silver, you you wash it off, and you do it again, you repeat until you have essentially you know, brought out all the highlights, gotten rid of blotches, uh, you know, sometimes made it, it look substantially different. And that, that can take uh, anywhere from 30 minutes to, well, in this show, I think the most I spent was six hours. Uh, but I'm really slow, so don't feel that bad for me. I'm really just slow at it. Slowing down a bit uh, is valuable and um, does produce a different sort of image. I, I think it produces a different way of, of seeing. You take, you take things that are 
unfamiliar and make them familiar, or things that are familiar and make them unfamiliar. Right, that sounds cool. I'll stop there. <laughs>